and welcome back. And we're moving into our first conversation this morning as we take a look at the criminal justice system in Belize and looking at some of the social contributors to the violence that we see in our country. Here with us this morning are two educators who work with our young minds to work within this field, actually. We have Berman Oliveira, who is a social work prof professional and a lecturer at the University of Belize. And we have Kendra Hoyt, who is the criminal justice lecturer and a life coach at Galen University. Good morning good and welcome morning. and thank you for being here. Good morning. It's good to be here. A wet morning. A very <laughs> wet morning and a very timely conversation. Um, I think people in the country have been speaking, especially during this month, um, about the situation of crime and violence in the country. And we are only one month in. So I just want to start off uh, by, by finding out a bit from your perspective. When, when you look at what is happening in the country, how much of that is a part of your conversations within the classrooms? Well, for me, it is every day. It's a daily conversation with my students. Um, I'm fortunate to have about 28 active uh, criminal justice majors at Galen. And they know that we bring this dialogue in at every single point that we can. Mm -hmm. Most of my students are in the field. They're immigration, customs, BDF, police. So they've already been in the field. They're in it working every day, <clears throat> and they're seeing it. They're experiencing it, sometimes even telling me in class, Miss, I just had an issue at border. I had this. I had that. They themselves are dealing with the trauma secondary of the scenarios happening on the street. Yeah. So it's impossible for me not to dialogue about it. So it's, yeah. it's a daily conversation. For us, it's a little bit different in that um, there are some, some courses that specifically look at, at, at that aspect, for example, social work and the law, and of course, human rights, and those mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but I wish that it, 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 that, that conversation uh, would become more, more um, so besides being a sideline discussion, yeah. it needs yeah. to be in the forefront, mm -hmm. especially among young people. I think um, as an individual, it, it's something that, that has been of concern for years, being in the juvenile justice system, well, right around 20 or so, 25 years, being involved from institutional care of young persons. I have seen and lived long enough to see that the, the, tre the trend continues to rise and, and um, we seem to be at a loss at how to stem this, this when issue. You, when you look at the criminal justice system from a broad perspective, in having conversations with people in and around the country, <coughs> some would say, well, the criminal justice system is flawed. It doesn't work the way it should mm -hmm. and what have you. But perhaps they're only looking at one aspect of the system as opposed to looking at it from a holistic view where mm -hmm. everyone has a role to play. Mm -hmm. Institutions also have a role to play in this huge system called the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. this apparatus, if I may. You look at law enforcement, you look at the types of laws that are being put in place, you look at the way justice is meted out and what have you. Mm -hmm. But people fail to see that this is a machine that is working with multiple parts and what have you. They're looking at it as the end result. Oh, okay, we have a matter that goes before the court, mm -hmm. a criminal matter, and we don't get the kind of results that we would desire. Mm -hmm. We go to court, the prosecutor doesn't present sufficient evidence to have someone convicted of a crime. The system has failed me, is what you hear. <coughs> what would you guys say in terms of being able to either address certain aspects of this problem or being able to look at it from a perspective where people can get a, a better understanding of how the system works? You want me to? Let, let me try and, and maybe <laughs> go first here. Um, sure. You know, you're right, Isani, that, that it's a very complex, very big <coughs> system. However, there are maybe elements that people, that I would look at. For example, you're given your, 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 it's given your example of a matter going to court. Mm -hmm. It's not about the outcome so much. It's many factors there, the delay. You know, the, the sense was justice, uh, it was it was the due process, um, you know, let me, let me extend on that example. If you see one matter being dealt with like as given favoritism based on, this, on the status of that individual, are you wealthy, are you, you, know, are you prominent, then mm -hmm. that has a direct negative impact on the confidence that people have. And you have a little term, the rule of law. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that can be measured, but the idea that no one is above the law 
is very key to the effectiveness of the justice system uh -huh. per se. Now, um, if you have, say, conviction rates for certain crimes, mm -hmm. murder as an example, <coughs> if your conviction rate is very low, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the intended imp impact that you're hoping as a deterrent. I don't know what it is. It varies. People can't come to grips as to what it is, but we know it's very low. Four, five, maybe six percent at the best. Now, that tells you that if you are planning or you will commit that crime, there is a better chance that you will never be convicted for that crime mm -hmm. as opposed to, so there's no real deterrent to, to that. <coughs> and, and crime in general, you know, um, but of course we can, um, th there are indicators that you look at and people struggle with homicides. That's one area, that's one aspect. And it's, we must be honest. You said, how do we fix it? Well, first, you must recognize that you have a problem. Right. If you mm -hmm. don't, then we're, then that's it. Yeah. There's no interest in, 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 in addressing that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I 100% agree with you and I would extend even this piece about the conviction rate in comparison to what people are seeing in the news. So if you're seeing constant murders um, happening as mm -hmm. if we're heading, today's the 29th, right? Mm -hmm. And we've had 10, I believe 10, maybe 11 now? Murders? 11? We're at documented. About 14. 14. We're up to 14, my yeah. gosh. So as of last week, it was 10, so we've already yeah. gotten to 14. If you're seeing that in comparison to the conviction rate, then that becomes sort of a, a like, oh, red flag. Mm -hmm. This is not something that people are getting convicted on. The other thing, because I'm not always confident that that in itself is a deterrent, mm -hmm. nor am I con convinced that the prison system is necessarily a deterrent. Absolutely. If I want to commit murder, I'm going to do it. My challenge, um, and I may be taking a risk here, but my students know that I'm pretty honest about this. When we talk about a criminal justice system, an infrastructure, a, a machine, a large machine, I would beg to say that Belize does not have an infrastructural system. It has three systems working in isolation of each other. Therein lies part of the challenge. Absolutely. That they're not talking and weaving in with each other. So we have police, corrections, and and while they may be functioning in their respective places, I would beg to differ that they're functioning in tandem with each other. I'm so glad you brought that up. And I think the additional dimension I want to add to that is the wider community. Yes. There seems to be a sense of the separation of them and us. Right. Um, the criminals yes. and us. Right. Who are just looking on and now our security is robbed. And, mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to, to be able to look at that from your perspective. Mm -hmm in how important it is that we identify this mm -hmm. as a collective problem yes. rather than the problem of the south side boys, right. the gang members, mm -hmm. the, the drunken spouses. How do we, wh why is it important that we have that community approach? Well, for me, I, I express every semester I bring a group of students to the prison. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we say on the way to the prison is these individuals that are incarcerated are no better or less than you. Yeah. And if you for a moment imagine that you are incapable of being inside those walls, think again. Mm -hmm. Think about your own humanity as a human being and your capacity to do wrong. And we often say the only difference between us and them is they were caught. And so the other issue here is that, yeah. um, to your point Marlene, is that this is a community issue. Um, and rather than being exclusionary, we need to be inclusionary and recognize that this is not about us and them. This is about us, it's about community building. Yeah. And we are a small country. We were just talking for a minute and I outside that this is a doable, um, workable situation to attack. We're tiny per capita and so tiny that to exclude and make ourselves sort of us and them above and below is ridiculous. It, it widens the gap and the ability to create change when you do that. So the more we can keep ourselves level and understand our own humanity and connection, when we go to the prison, I say, these people, they're your mothers, your aunts, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters. They're not removed from you. They're part of your community. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can attack the problem from a social service or criminal justice end is to recognize that we are more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. I think the social fabric, in a, in a manner of speaking, is becoming undone yes. when you look at the us and them scenario. Mm -hmm you fail to understand or realize that we are a part of a functioning society where what happens on either end affects us uh, whichever way. Yeah, it, you know, thinking about, we are so tainted as a society. Mm -hmm. We are that, that mm -hmm. us and them. Mm -hmm. 
and then of course part of we that society. We love soci that yeah. in every aspect. It works. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know that judgmental situation mm -hmm. comes from many places, from mm -hmm. our religious beliefs mm -hmm. and from our understanding of, of what, why we think criminals become criminals. And there, there are many ideas as to all these things. Yeah. However, that collective approach is the formula to do it. Mm -hmm. And everybody executing those various roles. Mm -hmm. However, people will react one way or the next. Individuals as, as everyday, uh, you know, just everyday persons will react to that impact that they're facing. One of the things could be that we become indifferent Mm -hmm. We come numb mm -hmm. to, 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 to heavy crime. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Some even Sometimes we will say, even. well, yeah. some people may even say in our desperation of trying to make sense of this reality is that, well, that is God's will. Mm. When we reach these levels mm -hmm. of response, then we are in a very bad state. Or they'll wipe each other out, which I hear oh, very yes. often. Yes. Wipe each other out. Right. Scary. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go a bit deeper into this because I think this is part of where we really need to, to start looking at the problem. Why is it that we have persons, young persons, who have such a bright future ahead of them? All young persons can have a bright future in front of them. Why do we have the inclination to violence? Why does some let's use the example Southside boys and girls like Isani and myself? are not in that type of life mm -hmm. and others are. What, what are some of the things taking place from childhood? You well, let me, yeah, let me try that. <laughs> um, there are many ideas as to why young persons. For example, there is the idea of socialization. Mm -hmm. Statistically, just about everywhere, violent crimes tend to be done, perpetrated by males, young males. Mm -hmm. you know, so so we, you know, are, they, are they socialized to be more aggressive kind of things? Um, then there are other ideas as to, like, from a functionalist perspective, um, who does benefit from crime? If you think about Belize, you, you know, wh when, you, when you look at these situations, you want to make it be relevant to where, where is it? So to, to get a better understanding, I think it was mentioned here very early that our population is very small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, these pockets of where we see Belize City as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a urban, as, a, as an urban center is very small by any stretch mm -hmm. to have these levels of violent crimes occurring. So you, one of the things I start to think about is it that people just genetically, well, it goes beyond who is benefiting from mm -hmm. having this situation. And you start to rethink, you know, there is an entire industry around violent mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or, or crime-ridden areas. There is there's the drug industry. There's all kinds of people thriving, making that living. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to start to think, um, is there a true will to stem it? When you think about it from an individual view, I mean, I, we can say somebody can think about pushing crime, uh, uh, drugs or committing crime as a, as, a, as a means of livelihood as something easy. Well, we need to rethink that. Are there better, op what are the options? What are the opportunities, real opportunities, educational and otherwise, for people to, mm -hmm. to be encouraged into kind of a <coughs> mainstream, <coughs> productive society? Mm -hmm. But if you can't reach it, people aren't expected to lay down and die at home with their families. You have to do what is necessary to survive. And unfortunately, crime can become that avenue for that, then of, co of course, with like everything, you go to work. Now, I, some people and a very small amount of people, crime is the way they make a living. Can I but ask? That is let very me, let small. Let me jump back to, to Dr. Gale's mm -hmm. report a couple years ago. Yes. And looking at and and I think this is always something that stands out to me in his final presentation <coughs> when he said, "Mothers, Single hug mothers. your boys, mm -hmm. hug your young boys. They need love." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just, I, I can see it, I can hear it, and I think it always reminds me of how these behaviors don't stop. Mm -hmm. a, a young boy doesn't say at 17, I'm going to kill someone right. and yeah. know that that might be the end of my life too. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I can speak, we're, we're currently using Dr. Yeah. Gale's, uh, his, his report as well as like Bushfire, mm -hmm. his, his book, and uh, we talk about it at great length. I'm currently teaching a juvenile delinquency class, and that is a specialty of mine. And so what I wanna say, about gangs, mm -hmm. their families, their functional families. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we, again, to your point, separate us and them. 
And the reason they're functional families is oftentimes these young boys are not receiving the things at home uh -huh. like care and love and affection, a sense of belonging, uh -huh. um, a sense of to make the decision on behalf of a victim that has no say. Yeah, I, well, go, I just wanted to, you know, we, we're focusing a lot on the, on, 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 on like the, the visible crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to look yeah. a little bit at the white collar crime. Ah, uh, yes. yes. That, yes. that I think Pervasive. those are major, <laughs> those yeah. kinds yeah. of crimes have major impact when we are in corruption. Yeah. How does that crime. impact violence that we see in society? Hugely. Well, uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I so. <laughs> I, I think there is the idea, well, if the big man, nothing is happening, uh -huh. Uh -huh. then and, and it's true, we must be honest. The, you know that white collar crime goes many times, even yes. there's even no concern about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we think about, I mean, I don't know if this would fit in that white collar crime, but <laughs> say the, the, the uh, immigration investigation. <laughs> it looks like nobody, oh, nobody's nothing, nobody's nothing, nobody, that's, responsible that's an act happening. of God. Mm -hmm. Nobody did anything wrong. Let you me know, give you just a little bit of insight madness. here because we do follow what people say online with our, with our live newscast. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's always disheartening to me when a prominent person is charged for a crime. We're not talking murder here. And from the onset, people say they're going to mm -hmm. get away. Mm -hmm. Nothing will happen. They're mm -hmm. going to get away. Yeah. They go through the court process. There's already some strange circumstances taking place, maybe mm -hmm. rapid uh, processing special treatment, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, in the end, they do they get off. Get off. Right. I think of what that does to the psyche of Belizeans in general. If I feel that way, mm -hmm. imagine an, an everyday person whose son was, is on remand for 10 years Correct. now, waiting for a stick of weed charge. Um, it, it has to be a part of, of what we talk about when yes. we can't say social violence takes place, but it takes place because people feel there is no right. system That's that is fair. That's part of the disillusionment too, though. Accountability is <laughs> yeah. gone. So, yeah. so let's talk about how those in inequalities or inequities yeah. contribute towards how people perceive consequences to actions. Right. Well, it's a lack of accountability. Yeah. And as, you know, one of the thir first things as a parent you teach your child is when you do wrong, you're accountable. There's there consequences, consequences yeah. right? Consequences to your actions, be it negative or positive, right? And so if we create that scenario and that's what's filtered out to me, the commoner, yes, I learned that only certain people are held accountable, right? And to a certain degree and consequences only fit a certain set of people and, to, and the white collar crime is definitely a part of that because there's money. There's often money transaction happening and that's huge, right? So if I'm your average uh, citizen who doesn't have that kind of money to afford to, to either have a good lawyer or pay someone off, let's be honest, then I'm demeaned, I'm less than, I'm devalued. Mm -hmm. I have no significance in my own country. As a citizen, I'm not part of community. I've already been ostracized. Mm -hmm. So why do I buy into the larger network of community if you, the, the government, the democracy, have already told me that I don't have a place in it, right? My family, my child, we don't have a place in it. So I'm on the outside already. Every now and again, there is this conversation. Oh, Belizeans are patriotic. You know, I, I born and grew in 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 Corozal. Mm -hmm. So many times for their independence, you go to Chetamal. Mm -hmm. And when people say, Viva Mexico, the, the, the MC, uh -huh. that place thunders, man. And here, Viva Belize, or Long Live Belize, it's answer. like, one, like no, no, I people no, say, no. well, what should we do? Yeah. Well, it's we just we have, what, what we have mm -hmm. done. You can't force people or teach people to be patriotic. Patriotic yeah. is something that is, mm -hmm. that is built in over years right. with respect and right. with sacrifice. And patriotic about what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, disillusionment, mm -hmm. that's, that's a course. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's a sad place to be yes. as a young country yeah. because it can be different. But people must want to advocate for it to be different. So there is a... There is a, there is a Maybe there is something to gain to have people poor mm -hmm. and uneducated. Oh, yeah. Because they never become champions right. and, and wanting better for them. They don't people. buck the authority. They don't right. buck it. They don't, they don't question. Why question exactly. it? Well, we could go way into the roots <laughs> of that one because we'll start talking about what we do to children within the school uh -huh, system. Yes. But I think one of what I, I appreciate that you said that mm -hmm. because I think it, it brings us back full circle with what our role is yeah. in all of this. And it feels overwhelming yeah. when you talk about 
what we see taking place, the good work and bad work uh, mm -hmm. that we know takes place in each department, you know? And I, and I always say that there are good things happening, but that doesn't mean that we say, okay, we'll let all the rest slide. Right. Right. Um, so we know there are major challenges in the police department. Right. Um, we know there are major challenges in the, in the courts. And we know obviously what's happening in the prison isn't necessarily the deterrent Right. For us to stop the issues that we're seeing, first of all, they aren't even getting there. Right. Um, right. So, what would you say when, when you when you look at this, and, and it's easy for Belizeans to become disillusioned, to become hopeless, mm -hmm. um, to become desensitized to the issue? What are some of the things we need to do as citizens who are complaining about the problem. Mm -hmm. we, we can do that. We'll, we'll, <laughs> if somebody starts a hashtag, it'll be everywhere. But the hashtag does nothing. Right. What do we need to do collectively as a society? I, I think, honestly, let me, let, you know, I think we need to have, we, to, we need to make better and, move and bigger demands from the people we pay that, to, to govern, that, mm. that, that, that orchestrate the governance system. Mm. We don't hold them accountable. We don't, I mean, think about the number of the, the reports or information that we are entitled as a citizens, as a citizenry, mm -hmm. you know, to, to what is going on in our society. We need to make better demands. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I don't know how you would do this, but I think there is need for some real reform that holds everyone duly accountable. When I think about this, the more power you have, the more system there must be to regulate your actions. Mm -hmm. But here is the inverse. The more power you have, there less actions to, yeah. to, 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 to monitor. And that, that shouldn't be the case. No one should be above the law. No. I think there's some fundamental um, governance issues that <coughs> need to be addressed. And otherwise, we'll just continue down this road until, well, you know, until something else gives. But it is the citizenship that needs to own their own power Absolutely. and recognize that um, public servants and folks that work, they work for us, right? right. You, you, uh, and somehow we have lost sight of that and we see ourselves below, right? Absolutely. And we, in fear of, and there's a, this undertone, underpinning like, oh no, we can't, you can't do that. And why? Who told you you can't? And maybe it goes back to our early learning, right? Mm -hmm. Who told you you can't? challenge authority or hold authority accountable and tell people to do their jobs with integrity and the way we deserve you have every right Absolutely. every right as citizens and that is patriotism right Absolutely. when you stand up and you recognize your democracy you own it and you demand it of the people above you who are positioned to create change well well, well think about you're absolutely right think about this the few people who have gone to this are stone mm -hmm. mm. to to yes. advocate and so you know in my humble little, stupid little thinking, these are the few brave and patriotic people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as a state, we can almost see, we, ca we can almost start to think that there is a discouragement, an active, mm -hmm. oh, don't mm -hmm. go there. Then, mm -hmm. then, you know, the state's first responsibility is to protect the rights of the people and Absolutely. its rights of its people. If you can't do that, then you need to leave. Mm. It's liberty is an autonomy. Absolutely. That is what, that's if, Absolutely. that's the, our constitution is built on that. That's, that's why we have that, to protect right. us. So if people need to demonstrate and to voice, your duty is to protect that pe that that's those right. people. Absolutely. I might not like the voice. Mm. I might not Doesn't like, matter. but <laughs> yeah. that's a Belizean and <coughs> our duty is yeah. to protect them. When we can't do that, then maybe we need to vacate that rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people are just opinion. fearful of being, we, we attack the messengers. Yeah. That's right. a first defense. Right. And right. when there are few messengers, that's a whole lot of attack. Right. Right. Um, and I think that we find so often that even to speak out about, against violence, it becomes a political issue. And I didn't yeah. want to go there in this I conversation, um, but it does. Yeah. And, and it shouldn't so, be. Yeah. That's a community issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a community issue. That's Absolutely. not about politics. That's about community and the welfare of our community and our human rights, our basic <laughs> human rights. Mm -hmm. And so when it goes in that arena and when, when the powers that be create a scenario where it's okay to go there, that's a problem because it should remain exactly with community and the powers that be should protect that. But in it's our not little the country, inverse. In our little country, regretfully, Everything is politicized. So mm -hmm. even when you look at things that should be of a social, right. it becomes of a political Absolutely. nature. 
for whatever reason, that's the way we've taught ourselves to think. You know, it's an I, I, I have a, a, little, a, a little philosophy, and my students would know that their comments are welcome, even mm -hmm. if we don't agree. We listen to it with respect, mm -hmm. and we can comment on it. I, yeah. It's about dialogue. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that can just make us better. Yes. I might not even like the comment, That's but if right. there's some correction to be made and so, but we want to encourage the voice of the people. Yeah. Any time, any state yes. wants to stifle that voice, mm -hmm. then we are not in a good That's place. That's right. And disagreement is okay. It's key, it's it's key yeah. to move us forward. Conflict is yes. not always no. bad. I love conflict. Violence is yes. bad. <laughs> right. Yes. Conflict, disagreement, yes. opposing opinions, yes should be a part of a thriving country yes. where people are growing and yes. learning. They have a voice and express that's, that yes. voice. That's and participation of our citizens from their children. Absolutely. Under the presidency of, of, presidency of Barack Obama, very pragmatic. He didn't mm -hmm. care to hear only the yes sir voices, but also the other voices. Mm -hmm. Look at what America has now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> that's that's another matter. I can't handle that right of, now. That's a horse of another <laughs> color. I can't handle that. But, <laughs> and I appreciate you saying that because I think a lot of Belizeans are watching it. Yes. But yeah. I always say, and I have been watching with the same disease like everyone else, <laughs> but let's focus on what's happening home. Because we have some major yes. issues at home yes. that we all have yes. a part to play as yes. well. So any final thoughts on this issue before we wrap up? Just I want to thank you for the opportunity. I know that some of it might have been a little bit crude or so, but it's, it's honest, <laughs> you know. And um, I think people, people need to evaluate these things mm -hmm. on a, on a, on a, on a on different levels. And let us, mm -hmm. let, us, let, us, let us face what is true, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then we can work from there. But thank you for the opportunity. Likewise, I'm grateful. And I just, I think for me, I tell my students, recognize your power to change. Um, change is amazing and you have the power to affect change. I think once we lose that sight that we don't have power, that helplessness kicks in and I just need uh, Belizeans to know that they do have the power uh, to create change. We're a small country. It is doable. We've, we just said this. This is a doable mark. So own it. Own it and move it forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you as well. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break now and when we come back, We'll be joined by Senator Valerie Woods to talk about some of the concerns they had in the last Senate meeting. That's coming up after the break, so stay tuned.